my dear student this is professor dr satish polchit tiwar from mit world peace university school of pharmacy pune india today i'm going to talk on the topic understanding of rheology in pharmacy let's begin with this topic so before that you must understood what is rheology okay so rheology is nothing but the science of physics that concern with a flow of fluid and deformation of a solid you all of you know rheology is very very important in the formulation and analysis of pharmaceutical product such as emulsion suspension suppositories cosmetic preparation like cream ointments lotions even tablet coating solutions we need to understood the rheology that is flow property of the liquid or deformation of the solids rheology is involved in mixing flow materials of their packaging into container because you all of you know uh, we have to fill the containers we have to maintain the flow of that liquids so as to uh, so as to pack the container properly the accuracy and the uh, dose is very very important uh, 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 that will directly affect on the your uh, therapeutic effects that's why we have to maintain the proper dose in your containers so that should be that for that we one has to understood this flow properties rheology of particular product which can range in consistency from fluid to semi solid to solid can affect the uh, its patient acceptability physical stability even biological viability in your uh, system example if you take viscosity has been showing the effect on absorption of rate of drug from gi tract okay ophthalmic doses from also the viscosity is play vital roles because it express the resistance of fluid flow higher the viscosity greater the, greater the resistance of flow that you understood okay so viscosity is very very important one has to understood the viscosity because that are that different intrinsic factor that influence on viscosity one is molecular size heavy mol molecular weight size particle have more viscosity even shape intermediate uh, intermolecular forces of attraction added substance even non electrolytes added substance then pressure temperature this directly affect on your viscosity because, okay okay as you increase the intermolecular forces shapes added substance then viscosity going to be increased so one has to understood how the flow pattern is going to change with this all in, uh, intrinsic factors the study of flow properties of liquid is important for pharmacists working in the manufacture of several doses from just now we talk the system changes their flow behavior when exposed to different uh, stress condition so what are the fundamental of rheology just now we talk about that in manufacturing of doses from like suspension we pharmacists must undergoes different process like mixing flowing through pipes filling into containers so one has to understood this material uh, process how the material is flowing so flow rate changes influence the selection of mixing equipments so handling of drug administration syringeability of the medicines pouring of the liquid from container extrusion of ointment from tubes all depends on the changes of flow behavior of the doses forms so uh, that's why we must understood this classification of newtonian and non newtonian flow if you see the classification broadly it has been divided into newtonian flow and non newtonian flow what is newtonian flow newton was the first to study the flow properties of liquid in the quantitative terms that's why it is called as newtonian flow liquid that obey newton's law of flow or called as newtonian flow okay which is denoted by this formula f is equal to n g f okay so non newtonian flow is what non newtonian flow means are those substances which fail to follow newton's law a liquids are solids heterogeneous dispersion like uh, we uh, we prepared pharmaceutical suspension uh, like colloidal sol solution emulsion okay ointments they does not obey the newton's law and liquid when viscosity changes after the shear stress when you apply the shear stress the viscosity is going to be changed that system we call as non newtonian flow so we will discuss the three uh, systems okay again this non newtonian flow has been divided into the three system that is bingham that is plastic flow pseudo plastic flow and dilatant flow again this system have been classified into three plastic flow pseudo plastic flow and dilatant flow okay let us discuss first plastic flow what does it mean before going to start plastic flow you take the example uh, any system in which there is a flow cools like you you have the butter uh, like you have the flow collated suspension ghee okay which is having aggregate particles okay even flow cools have mostly if you talk about the flow collated suspension flocks are there like this you have this particle all particles are aggregate in nature when you apply the shear stress okay what will happen initially they won't move they won't separate okay initially what happens they won't uh, move uh, initially but after uh, see this is the try to move each other but they are try to move each other they, they are form a collide to each other okay this is a system after giving a particular shear stress but once you again apply the more stress okay why why this thing second stage is going to be uh, formed because this molecule have a uh, force of attractions they have uh, their own force of attraction because that's why they are aggregate okay the force of attraction because they held together now you applying the st shear stress what will happen this will try to move each other then again you apply in the shear stress then what will happen the individual entity will form all particle get uh, form a individual entity individual particle will be getting okay 
that is we call as yield value this difference between these two okay what is yield value yield value is denoted by f okay small f amount of force required to break the intermolecular force of attraction intermolecular force between these two intermolecular force of attraction that is we call as yield value that is also called as force of flocculation okay interfolio that inter particular force of attraction there is a flocculus break act as individual particles okay that is we call as yield value now you can how we can show this graph we just take the rate of shear versus shearing stress f you will see here at this level there is no breaking a particle you could see here second level this is second level. till this second level then it again this slowly slowly start to form a individual particle that's why the graph show like this plastic flow this flow is called as plastic flow and this difference is called as f is called as yield value this difference we call as yield value how we can take it this f minus f f is the rate of we call as uh, shearing stress minus yield value directly proportional to g you can take it like this you will be getting a plastic flow okay net plastic flow this is we call as plastic flow now so you must have understood in plastic flow what what is happen okay the yield value you are getting in plastic flow okay total stress we can calculate by this formula okay here miss particles are initially behave non newtonian flow but later on it uh, behave as a newtonian flow now this system is act as a newtonian fluid okay here there is uh, no resistance between the each particle here there is no resistance but here there is resistance between the individual particle but here it follow a newtonian flow here non newtonian means from non newtonian to newtonian flow conversion is called as plastic flow but there is inside uh, in between there is a yield value is there okay that is the understanding of this uh, plastic flow then next system that is pseudo plastic flow it is also called a shear thinning system means the system is going to be thin thin means you all of you know less viscous that is pseudo plastic flow before going to start pseudo plastic one has to understood the one example okay take the one example okay pseudo plastic flow you will just take the example of polymer because this system is be uh, mostly obeyed for polymer polymer like we have the hpmc that is hydroxy propyl methyl cellulose cmc or carboxy methyl cellulose tragacan other natural gum we can take okay as one thing gum and other gore gum if you just put this polymer into water okay what will happen this polymer have a hydroxyl group you all of you know they they uh, and we are putting into water uh, present uh, uh, water contain hydrogen group what happens they attract the water molecule and it will swell because of the hydration that process we call as hydration that you understood because of hydration now see the initial particles are the swell these all polymers got swell okay after that you applying the shear stress what will happen after shear stress dehydration takes place now here water is going to be uh, it will give uh, it will due to the give up uh, this water is given okay because of dehydration due to the give up hydrogen molecule hydrogen molecule try to align due to their a direction of flow okay now you can see here or, or here it will become less viscous initially it was high viscous okay highly viscous because of gel formation now it become less viscous this system is called as shear thinning system means we, once you apply the shear stress the system is going to become less viscous okay that's why you could see the graph like this okay if you take the this plot uh, shear stress versus your uh, rate of shear okay you can see here there is no yield value directly you can see the graph like this means upward direction the curve go up like this curve is go up like this initially particle aggregates now after thinning shear thinning particle behave like this okay there is no yield value over here getting rate of shear is we call as a liquid is flowing more compared to applied shear stress increase the liquid uh, flowing okay uh, become less viscous that you understood from that that's why it is called a shear thinning system you understood from thinning means your system is going to become a thin that's why it is called as pseudo plastic system mostly applied for pharma, uh, this is very very important system in pharmacy because uh, you are going to make suspension emulsion one has to understood this okay whether the, your system is going to be uh, because this is nothing but a gel to sole formation in ophthalmic preparation we have to prepare the in situ gel one has to understood this system so one can make the ophthalmic gel like in situ gel means uh, at different different temperature you know the temp uh, at boil temperature your system is gel uh, sorry sol but at normal temperature it's a gel like structures getting that in gel to sol conversion also we can uh, get to know from this pseudo plastic flow whether your flow is behaving like this or not you can select the polymer accordingly this is the application of this pseudo plastic flow in pharmacy now next is next flow is your dilatant flow okay this is again uh, same system it is uh, showing in this way okay that what is dilatant flow it is called a shear thickening opposite to pseudo plastic now in pseudo plastic the shear thickening takes place your system become less viscous the particle try to align due to direction of flow but here what is happen shear thickening takes place means you apply the shear stress the system become more and more viscous okay let's take the example of deflocculated suspension 
you might have uh, you must have gone through my previous video i have been explain about the deflocalized suspension where the uh, the particle suspended particle are more as compared to your continuous phase the example if you take any any substance any system more than 50% of deflocalized particle like in dispersed phase is more than continuous phase then the system uh, obey this dilatant flow okay uh, example your deflocalized suspension okay so let's take the example over here this is your system okay all our flocks are there this is called as flocks okay not flocks it's called as particle suspended okay this uh, example you, you can take corn starch any kind of deflocalized suspension okay the particles are suspended in your systems okay but if you apply the shear stress what will happen the it form a wide volume you can see the wide volume okay so wide space are creating and behave like a solid like that you can see over here okay initially what happens the system is we call it as uh, it's a corn starch okay sorry this is a corn starch okay a deflocalized systems okay the particles are suspended water level is very very less and particle size is more a particle uh, we call this quantity is more okay when you apply the steel stress what happens void volume created like that if system is there you are uh, applying some impact a hammer like impact you can get okay what will happen this will show behave like this solid like structures okay it behave as a, a solid like structures semi solid to solid that is called as dilatant flow shear thickening your system become more and more thick so system actually increase in the volume when shear are called dilatants okay when the stress is removed dilatant system return to original state of fluidity that is the property of this dilatant that is called a thixotropic behavior actually okay you can see here you could see here your dilatant flow okay there is no yield value over here okay the curve is go this direction as you apply the shear stress the viscosity is going to be increase over here this is the force f shear velocity versus shear stress you will be getting like this this is example of corn starch with pg okay you can see here how uh, becoming solid okay at initially water but when you apply the shear stress it become solid behave like a solid actually uh, what is the trouble here just now we talk a presence of ill stress in the the structure that reforms reversibly decreasing shear rate at high shear uh, rate the structure is broken and viscosity is dominated by hydrodynamic interaction the restructuring phenomena often term as thixotropic behavior it is comparatively slow recovery on standing of metal which lost its consistency through shearing thixotropy is only applied to shear thinning system this indicate breakdown of structure shear thinning which does not reform immediately when the stress is removed or reduced we can you can see over here in this system okay this is a system uh, 3d structure how thixotropic behavior is changing uh, resting phase stage and completely unstructured stage okay application what is the application of this rheology why we are studying this dilatant flow and all these things because pharmacist has to make substance and invention and all one has to understood the flow patterns viscosity of the cream lotion may affect the rate of absorption of product by the skin greater release of active ingredients is generally possible from the softer less viscous base viscosity of semi solid product may affect the absorption of this topical product due to effect of viscosity on the rate of diffusion of active ingredients because we just now uh, we have discussed about the factor influencing on viscosity intrinsic factor molecular size shape intermolecular forces non electrolyte adic substance pressure temperature these are the which factors one has to understood this for rate of absorption also very important thixotropic useful in the formulation of pharmaceutical suspension emulsion we have discussed flocculated deflocculated system uh, in flocculated system mostly uh, pseudo plastic and this flow pattern which uh, plastic flow pattern is away but in case of deflocculated system dilatant flow is uh, mostly follow okay this is the mind map how we can remember entire rheology okay rheology is broadly classified into what is rheology just to understand the flow property study of flow properties or deformation of solid how it takes place it has been broadly non newtonian and newtonian flow broadly classified a non newtonian flow what happen viscosity changes after the shear stress that you understood it is being classified into three system plastic pseudo plastic and dilatant plastic flow may we understood flocal system l values there pseudo plastic mostly happen with the polymer system it could be synthetic or, or natural polymer it is shear thinning takes place in the dilatant system it is mostly followed by deflocalized system where the particle size is more Uh, your uh, suspended particle is more than 50% then this system obey uh, this is a shear thickening system because the here viscosity is going to increase and the, the system is behave as a solid only this is the mind mapping how we can remember the entire rheology okay i hope so you understood this thank you very much for listening my this video okay keep watching my video and subscribe my video channel okay thank you very much once again